Hey everyone, it's me, Kirk Maston. We're coming to you today live from YouTube. And I've got a really good show for you today. We're gonna to be talking about travel and street photography edits and which presets to use. Um, before I start like really diving in, I just wanna quickly go over our three-step edit. It's kind of a core function of our workflow of what Maston Labs is about. It's about simplicity, getting a timeless look rooted in real film. Uh, so that you and your clients will love your images for years and years to come. So here is the quick, quick rundown of how you use Maston Labs. First, you want to apply the preset. That's very important as all of our presets are built from actual film scans and film models that we've built in-house. And real film actually has a starting white balance. So you don't want to try to figure out your white balance before you apply the film look that you want. You want to apply the film look first and then do any kind of minor corrections you need to. Second, you want to adjust exposure, obviously. That's very important. So adjust exposure after you apply the preset. And the third step is to adjust white balance and tint as needed. And once you've got that, you've got it all dialed in. So it can be that simple. Um, a lot of times, I, in a lot of these videos, I really dive into tint. And I might, may do that on this video as well because I feel that that is the hardest aspect of really good color correction for most photographers. It's just difficult to see tint. It's hard to see that global magenta or green tint in your image. So if I come across anything like that, I'll, I'll work on it and I'll help you out because it, it will help you endlessly in your own editing. All these images you're about to see are from either our team here at Mass and Labs or the community uh, on Facebook. If you haven't already joined our, our Facebook community, please do so. It's an amazing place to learn. It doesn't matter if you own anything from Mass and Labs or not. We're just there to welcome you with open arms and help you in your career. So please join us. Just go to Facebook, type in Mass and Labs community, and yeah, and hang out. Um, all right, so let, let us begin. If you have any questions as I go, this is live. Please ask them, and Casey will flag me down, and I will answer them to the best of my ability. Or I'll just make up something. Um, no, I'll do my best to answer everything you got. Okay, so this is the image from our like event banner. So I thought I'd start with this first. Uh, this was shot by Casey, who's with us right now. This is the really fantastic uh, karaoke bar just down the street from us and fine Mexican restaurant. Um, we picked this image because it has some kind of challenging colors here. Uh, the lighting is really subtle. We've got uh, this kind of great light spillover off the side of these cars. And uh, there's quite a lot of detail in this photo. There's a lot going on. Whoa. So the big question that we're trying to answer today, and for a lot of people, is what preset should I use for street photography or travel photography? And when to use black and white color. And, and when to use black and white color. Great question. So, my general approach to this is, is kind of like pairing wine with food. Um, there's certain, I don't know, for lack of a better term, a vibe that you're trying to match with the film slash preset. And in this image in particular, you know, the first thing I think of is lots of color. There's kind of this blue sky, this purple, you know, there's some blue in the, these cars in front. So I'm going to go right immediately to pairing this with something that's very colorful. And the thing that comes to mind first is actually the uh, Adventure Everyday Pack, and in particular, Ektar 100. So Ektar 100 is a very recent film by Kodak, uh, relatively recent. It's a very modern film. It's very, very saturated, colorful, vibrant, and it's really meant to emulate slide film, which barely anybody shoots anymore because uh, it is very difficult to shoot. It's the equivalent of a JPEG if you're shooting film. Whereas color negative film, like Ektar, can look like slide film, but you got that really nice latitude that you can only get with color negative film. So you can over or underexpose the film a little bit and still get a good result. So anyway, enough about that. It's just a great film. So I'm going to apply it, apply it Ektar 100. And you can see the colors just like really, really pop. There's a lot of contrast. Um, in fact, it really draws you into kind of the center of the image. And in light of that, I'm, I'm going to, you know, actually skip one of the steps for a second and just do a really tight crop. 
I want to get right into the business right here, right in the middle. So let's do, I don't know, I really like 4.3. So we're just going to flip that on its side. And you can see that that just immediately makes the photo way more interesting. We're kind of getting into the action here. I like that it's offset, like the, the, the spotlight kind of, all the color is kind of offset a little bit down in the corner. It gives my eye a place to travel to. So I can go across the sign kind of like in a Z over to the side and then down along the curve of this car past these two people to this sign. And then I can follow this curve down with my eyes all the way to the corner of the, of the photo. It looks really cool. In fact, one of the only things I would do is maybe use auto transform on to kind of straighten the, the perspective a little bit. Um, that is a tool in our toolkit. Yeah, perfect. So much better. So we, we've started with something that was um, kind of, let me show you here, kind of dark and, and far away, you know, it was shot from across the street. And now we've got something that's like really up close. It's corrected a little bit. It's got a lot of nice color. So I would pick Ektar for this image because the color in Ektar enhances the color in the image already. And this image is all about that kind of late night neon color if that makes sense. Okay, so back to the workflow that I had to tell you about in the beginning. Let's go back to that for a second. We have Ektar applied. The second step is exposure. Now this is a little bit tricky with an image that's very low light like this. If I pull up on the exposure, we're gonna kind of quickly, um, not blow out, but just kind of really reduce the richness of the top part of the image here around the sign. And I don't really necessarily want to see all the detail in the building above. So I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to pull way up on exposure. In fact, I'm going to kind of focus on what's happening here up in the sign and down here with these guys, these two guys here. Uh, for the guys, I want to make sure that I've got enough information in the shadows that it doesn't look super hard and crispy. And for the sign, I want to make sure that it feels a little bit rich. Um, so I'm just kind of evening out the two and the way that you do that is you go to the tone profile section and these are basically contrast controls. So I can bring back in the detail in the sign and I can bring out some of the detail in the shadows by using all soft. Oh, it's a little extreme. Actually, this could be good. So yeah, it's actually good that it's extreme because you can really see what's happening. The amount of detail in this particular picture when you use all soft really comes back in the highlights and it kind of almost becomes a little bit HDR. I'm not a huge fan of HDR by any means, but the idea of extending the range in the shadows and highlights is pretty cool. And by applying that, you can actually go to exposure and bring this up just a little, just a tiny bit. And now the photo has really good detail all the way into the shadows, really nice color, and everything is kind of just evened out in a nice way. Because tone pro the tone profile section is a contrast control section that preserves the look of film, essentially. Uh, last step would be exposure, or not exposure, uh, temperature and tint. This is kind of tricky because all the light in this image is artificial and the side of the building is like purple. Um, the lights on the sign, uh, I think also have a color to them. We've got this kind of yellow tungsten inside. So I really, for, for something like this, I have to just kind of sweep and play, sweep and play uh, with temperature. And I can see that just by going up just a little tiny bit, so this is, this is just straight out of the camera, I think by going up just a tiny bit in temperature, I think it really brings out this kind of band of like tungsten light in the middle. It's kind of yellow band. So I like, I like that. As far as, as, far as tint goes, um, you know, a lot of people say, well, it's way too magenta, but I mean, that, that is kind of the situation with the lighting and the color of the paint, but we could see what happens if you go towards green. Um, Actually, that's not bad. Actually, that, that's nice. I think it toned the uh, magenta down. But I don't want to go too far. I'm not trying to like correct it all the way out like that, necessarily. 
I think I think it really loses um, kind of the appeal of the image if you do that. So that is a basic edit with Ektar. And I think it, it really suits this image because it's all about color, pop, vibrancy, contrast. And this image has all of those qualities. So it's a good match. OK, let's move on down the line, shall we? Um, I'm going to do one thing real quick here. There we go. The uh, surface of the table is very um, shiny and my mouse was like not picking up what was happening. So put a little mouse pad under it. <clears throat> yes, this is live. Um, <laughs> that's the way it is. And you know what's cool about live? You get to see these little corrections, but you also get to ask questions because I'm here right now and you can ask me and I will help you. Okay, so this image is from Iceland Airwaves, a fantastic music festival. I shot this with a little Ricoh GR2, like little pocket camera. Um, I cannot remember the name of this band. They were fantastic. They're from Iceland. They're called Fanunu or something. <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, um, what I love about that little Ricoh GR2 camera is that it's, it's portable and it makes for really good black and white images. It has a really nice uh, black and white simulation in the camera itself. Sometimes it's a little too extreme though, and you can't really edit the, the JPEGs that you get out of it. So I like to shoot DNG files and JPEGs with uh, that black and white applied so that I can see what is what the potential of that image is in black and white, and then go do my own black and white using the Ilford pack on the DNG. Let, let me show you what I mean. Okay, so first of all, I consider this a really good candidate for black and white. Why? Uh, you will see when I edit it, but the, the, the dynamic lighting, uh, kind of the way he's standing, um, it looks great in black and white. So we're going to dive into black and white for this image. In general, when I'm shooting in black and white, so shooting in a black and white mode because I'm thinking in black and white, um, it really helps me find the right composition and the right lighting because you're removing the distraction of color. And so on the Ricoh GR2, I shoot it in, black, in a black and white mode because I wanna just focus on that aspect. Um, if I'm shooting like one of my older Canon cameras, they have black and white simulations too that you can shoot in and still get a raw file. It's a fantastic way to really learn to see and compose and seek out light in black and white. And it's particularly suited for street photography. Um, so back to this image. I'm going to use, I don't know, I think I'm going to use Pan F. Okay, <laughs> I've turned the lights out there. That's fine. Um, Pan F is our most like, like high uh, contrast, uh, deep toned black and white simulation or emulation or preset. Um, but after applying that, I can bring out some really cool detail in here just by really cranking on the, uh, the old exposure dial. Um, but look at the, look at this super rad grain. It is so perfectly suited to this camera. Um, it, and what I love about the Ricoh GR2 is that I think it was just really intended to be a black and white camera. Uh, the color modes are nothing really to write home about. I don't really like the color out of the GR2, but man, does it handle black and white well. And it's a powerful little combo for street photography. I wouldn't necessarily say this is street photography. This is, you know, concert photography, but I did use this camera in Iceland the whole time I was there and it was fantastic for capturing all those like little candid moments. So, um, yeah, I really like this. So that's a really quick edit. Just pan F, pull the exposure up, work with the light that you have. If I wanted to kind of bring out some more detail on this side, I could either do uh, shadow soft, so just go like that, and that kind of lightens up the, you know, the, the shadows the same way that the scanner would, and I could actually bring down exposure a little bit. I could do it this way, or I could back up a few steps, and I could just grab uh, a brush and just brush in some uh, exposure. So let's see here. Uh, let's see. 
do put a dodge brush on and then I can go in here and just dodge you know some of the background and dodge like the side of his arm a little bit of the smoke behind his body just to get that separation behind him and that's just another way you can do it so here is before and after and it's just a cool little moment from a concert that I loved and I really hope I really hope that there's an Iceland Airwaves this year and if there is I will be there and you will see me with this little camera because I will go to that festival um, as long as it exists basically it's that great okay let's move on down the line um, let's see I'm gonna pick I'm gonna be kind of self-indulgent here Oh, Wim is? Cool. Oh, great. Okay, let me see here. Wim, let's take care of you. All right, so Wim Jansen, thank you for sending this in. Casey pointed out that you are in the audience right now, which is fantastic. That's the beauty of a live broadcast. Okay, so for your image, you're shooting at night. You've got this artificial uh, lighting. It looks like um, purely fluorescent. You know, you can see it in the back of this car. Uh, it's actually quite clean light, which is great for nighttime. When I look at the colors in this image, you've got these really fantastic blues and this red here. Um, I immediately think of Portra. Uh, Portra really handles blues and kind of these subtle yellows and oranges really, really well. Um, I think of the portrait films in general as being street photography films. I don't think that about the Fuji original films. Those are like so kind of purely in the light and airy camp that I just never go to them for street photography. It's just not gritty enough. It doesn't feel right. The portrait on the other hand, yes. And between portrait and portrait pushed, you have a really nice color palette that you can choose from. Portrait Original is going to be a little more mellow. It doesn't have the, the super like contrasty punch of a pushed film. So we'll start with that and see how it looks. Um, let's see how Portrait 400 looks. So that's four. So this is 160. It's our, it's the most muted of the three. Portrait 400 is kind of in the middle. And then we've got Portrait 800, uh, which treats, as you can see, if you look up in the reds, it really kind of adds a lot of depth to the reds. I like that. So I'm going to go with Portrait 800. Let me turn off my brush. Uh, second step, exposure. Okay. I think this could use just a tiny bump in exposure. I mean, you, I, you could see I just barely went up, like 0.25. If I was to go way up here, um, it just kind of completely loses its mood. And this is kind of a candid moment of somebody behind this door uh, working on this old car. So I'm going to go up in exposure just a little bit. Uh, as far as like temperature and tint goes, uh, temperature looks pretty good. I, you know, maybe, maybe a tiny bit warmer and then tint, uh, I, I, there's a green in this cement that is really kind of driving me crazy. So I'm, I can quickly understand that I need to go a little bit more towards magenta. So I just went, let me see. Yeah. It's right about there. So this is where we're at before and after. It's not like a huge, huge change, um, as it shouldn't be. Uh, film is actually pretty subtle. That's the beauty of it. And that's also why it's very hard to replicate. It's not like, a, it's not like an Instagram filter, like one of, the, one of the older Instagram filters where you just put it on your, your image and you don't even edit it because it's so drastically changed that who cares what the white balance was or anything? Real film is, is very subtle. It's like ice cream. You know, it it's, takes energy to keep it as ice cream and it's very easy to melt it into milk and very, very difficult at that point to make it into ice cream again. So everything is very subtle. So there's your subtle Portra 800 edit. A few things I would do to this is I would maybe play with Shadow Soft. So just to bring out a little bit of detail like under here, I, I like that. Um, I would also use auto transform on that's another tool we have and you see how that corrects the door frame and I think that's just more pleasing 
without correcting it, this blackness over here is distracting and I don't like it. However, by correcting it, it now becomes like a frame, which I think is cool. It's, it's a lot more geometric. Um, what else? I would also add maybe 35 millimeter grain. And for you to actually see that, I should probably zoom in. So you can see you can see the grain kind of change as I as I scroll over it. Uh, I think that's a really nice touch too. And actually, am I seeing you in the mirror of the vehicle? No, that's his arm. That's this guy's arm. Okay, that would have been really trippy. That would have been like a I don't know Inception moment. Um, but there you go, Wim. Thank you for sending it in. That's a really cool moment. I think Portrait 800 suits it really well. The only other one I would maybe possibly choose would be something from the push pack if you want to get a little grittier. So, I mean, look how cool that looks too. Portrait 160 push two stops. Um, you know, this feels more true to life, which it is. I mean, Portrait 400 is very neutral. And then when you push, say, Portrait 160 two stops out of the Portrait push pack, you get that really fantastic kind of uh, red shift in the shadows and it just feels edgy so I like that too I don't know I mean my advice would be you should have both packs so <laughs> there you go okay thank you Wim for sending that in that's really really cool um, okay so nature travel etc etc uh, so this is by Glenn Bowman Glenn said your choice uh, this is not street photography but I, you could say that this is travel photography. So let's do a quick edit with this. Uh, again, like I said at the top, picking the right film or preset is like being a sommelier. You're just trying to pair it with the vibe in the photo. With an image like this, it looks very cold. There's a lot of green. There is some interesting uh, red and orange in the rocks. It's a little hard to see in this raw file. But for something like this, I, I, you know, again, Fuji Original is really meant to be reserved. I, I hate to pigeonhole something, but it really is kind of pigeonholed into the light and airy, like wedding and portrait world. So I would, again, I would not pick it if you're trying to represent street photography or even, well, and maybe some travel photography. This image to me feels like something out of Fuji Color every day. So the films in Fuji Color Every Day are drugstore films that Fuji makes, hence the name Every Day, that you would shoot just every day for everyday moments, everyday moments in your life. Uh, the characteristics of these film, films are that they've got a little more grain than the pro films. Uh, they've got a little more saturation, a little more punch, and I think that'll be well suited to this image. So let's see. Superior 400 or do we want to do Fuji C200 or we could do Acros that looks pretty <laughs> sick <laughs> that looks pretty good actually although they okay they, they do get a little lost in there um, sometimes uh, color is a good way to find things in an image and when you turn it black and white you really can't find the people although the composition is great okay we have a question it's actually a question for me yes um, how would it look Okay, let me do, that's a great question. So Casey asks, how would this look using the black and white filters from the Ilford pack? I'm gonna do a quick superior edit because that's kind of where my instinct was. And then I will duplicate it and do an Ilford edit with the filters so you can see. And I'll go into what, what that means. So that's just one click with superior 400. Looks pretty good, looks really good. Um, I would then do exposure, I think down just a little bit. And then as far as like temperature and tint goes, uh, let's just take a look at the image a little closer. There's a lot of information in this photo, so you, you have to kind of zoom in to get your bearings. Um, they look a little pale to me, so I'm gonna increase the temperature just a little bit. And then as far as like uh, temperature and tint go, or uh, as far as tint goes, uh, well, it depends on where you look. Um, let me find a neutral. Maybe that jacket. So I'm gonna add just a tiny bit of green. There we go. So that that is a very quick and simple Superior 400 edit, uh, which I think is appropriate for this image. 
and I'm going to duplicate this and then do more of a stylized black and white edit. And what I'm gonna show you is very useful for basically in many kinds of photography, fine art, street, travel, portraits, good stuff. So let's go back into Ilford. Ilford original is our like black and white film lovers pack. It has a lot of extra tools that are not in any of the other packs that are specifically for dialing in black and white. So let's do, uh, let's do maybe pan F. Maybe if I want something a little more mellow, I could do HP five. I'm going to do HP five. Okay. So inside of Ilford, our black and white pack, you have a few extra tools. Uh, color balance is not as important. I mean, the underlying temperature, you know, it has a little bit of an effect, but not much. As long as it's in the ballpark before you convert to black and white, you should be fine. So we're going to skip the temperature tint part. As far as exposure goes, um, I'm again, again, I'm going to lower it just a tiny bit like I did in the color version, not a lot. And that is a basic black and white. Oh, cool. We have the color version on the left, black and white on the right. Looks pretty good. Now we're going to get into something really cool here. Here are some specific tools in the Ilford pack. So not only do you have different films with different amounts of grain. So this is HP five at 35 millimeter grain. And then we have a medium format version with much smaller grain, but you also have black and white filters and black and white filters come from literal glass, black and white or bl colored glass filters that you put on your lens when shooting real black and white film that changes how the black and white film looks when you go to develop it. It changes the tones. And depending on the filter that you have on your camera, it can make, for example, like blue sky look black, like Ansel Adams would do in the desert. He would put like a really deep red filter on his camera and it would make it look almost like nighttime. Um, or you can use a yellow filter if you want to improve uh, someone's complexion, like, like get rid of blemishes. It, it really increases the luminance of skin and so on. You have these filters in the Ilford pack and you get a different look with each one. So this is with no filter. This is with the red filter. You can see how it just changes like the kind of the contrast, but also certain parts of the image drastically change. Here's with the green filter. And you can see all the green in the image increases in luminance. So when I say luminance, I mean it gets brighter. So all the green leaves get brighter. Anything green in the photo gets brighter. And here's the yellow filter. It's similar to the green filter. Uh, yellow and green are, once you get really into color theory, yellow and green are almost the same color. <laughs> it's very frustrating, especially when you're trying to make film emulations. If you've ever tried to make any of your own, you will eventually realize that the most frustrating thing in the world is teasing apart yellow and green um, because they're very similar. So you have three different looks. Which one do I like the best? Well, in this case, I think I like yellow and I wouldn't normally, I don't normally pick that one, but it looks really good for this. It gives it a very um, soft kind of ethereal look and it draws my attention to the people in the middle. It should for you too, watching at home. Last cool thing that's in this pack is we have paper tones. So back in the day when you were doing black and white printing of your actual film, you could pick the tone of the paper you were printing on. And Ilford made neutral toned paper, which is what it defaults to in this pack. They also made warm tone paper, which is slightly sepia, like, but very slightly, like not a cheesy bad sepia, but just a tiny bit, just a little bit warm. And then they made a cool tone paper, which I thought was just the coolest thing in the world, especially for kind of colder, grittier street photography moments. This is not a street photography moment, but it looked really good on it. And let me just show you that really quick. So here is warm tone. You can see it's a little bit sepia. I'll, I'll, I'll get off of it for a second. This is standard. This is warm tone. Okay. Now here's standard again. And here's cool tone. And it almost looks silver. It's like kind of silvery blue. And I think for this, I think, I think I would pick warm tone for, for this mood. And then imagine this image printed really, really big on rag paper 
signed inside of a frame on a wall, super dope. That would be a very easy sell to a client. So I'm, I'm really always excited about Ilford. It's a great pack. So thank you, Glenn, for sending that in. Super cool photo. All right, let's move on down the road. Um, I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna pick, I wanna get a portrait. Cause I'm a kind of a portraity person. Actually, this is pretty cool. This feels street, street-ish, street photography-ish. So we've got this composition, <laughs> I'm gonna use that term loosely. Uh, we were shooting, we were literally street shooting, shooting this guy and then shooting him skating when we were down in Mexico, when we used to be able to travel. And I like this image because it's kind of an accidental great composition. You've got these great blocks of dark and light colors. Uh, there's action happening. It looks like he's like literally floating. Um, he's got some interesting texture in his body and you can go a lot of different ways with this image. So I'm going to do, I'm going to do two, two different ways. I'm going to go to the portrait push pack and do like portrait 400 push one stop or maybe two stops. Let me see. I think one stop. And then I'm going to increase the exposure just a little bit, warm it up just a little bit and take a little bit of that green out. Uh, and I know I'm kind of flying through here, but I've done this like eight hours a day for 10 years or something. So I, sometimes I go fast, but anyway, what I wanted to say is that the portrait pushed looks look really good on hard light street photography like this. I don't know if anyone even knows who I'm talking about, but there's a, a, an amazing photographer named Alex Webb, one of my favorite street photographers. Um, I will never in my life shoot one photo ever as good as any of his photos, but he's one of the best street photographers I've ever seen. And he did a lot of work in Mexico. He did, uh, he did his latest book, I can't remember what it's called. It's called the, something like The Harshness of Light. Damn, I feel bad about this. Anyway, a lot of the look in that book looks very much like this situation with the, por the, por the pushed portrait films. I believed he probably used a lot of slide film, which had a very similar look. It's very popular for National Geographic, but you get something similar to that with the, por the pushed portrait looks to that old like Kodachrome look. And so I like it on stuff like this with that harsh light. Another way you could go with this is we could go back to our good old friend, uh, the Ilford pack and do something with grain and black, white, and grain. So, you know, that's classic street photography too, is black and white. Actually, let me go to the most classic of them all, Tri-X. So Tri-X is inside of the Adventure Everyday pack, which has some good looks too. So this is uh, Ektar, super colorful, gold 200. That looks pretty badass too, actually and then Tri-X, that looks good. So that, that is another look that I would do with this. So you got your like kind of focusing on light shadow composition on the left using black and white. And on the right, you've got kind of that more gritty, um, you know, bright sun, hard light film look using Portra 400 push two stops. And if I were to apply it on his portrait, it would also look really nice. So, so here is Tri-X. And if I was to make a duplicate of this, hold on one second. and go back to portrait pushed. I think sometimes it really helps to see a portrait as well. Um, that also looks super, super good. And I hope you can see what I mean by how the portrait films have that kind of gritty realism. Um, you know, when you're, when you're not trying to make something feel like a fairy tale, 
which can happen a lot in like wedding and portrait photography where you're trying to make everything like really light and airy, really pastel, really like editorial J crew look. That's, that's like perfect for those clients. If you are shooting street photography or travel photography, especially if you're in the vein of a national geographic photographer, which we all aspire to, or if you're a street photographer, you do probably or travel, you're looking for more of a realistic, gritty, timeless look, and you get that with the portrait looks. So that is, that's my talk for today on that. Let's move on. Uh, all right. So we've got this image by Peg Donahue. Uh, thank you, Peg. You've been a, a longtime supporter of all of our Facebook lives. So I was really stoked that you sent one in. Uh, it looks like you got this candid moment of someone really enjoying the sun. So just kind of chilling out. It's great. Um, and thank you for sending it in with an image like this. Uh, I think my first instinct goes to something that is a little bit colorful, but also realistic. So I would say within the adventure every day pack goal 200 kind of fits that bill. Um, or maybe Ektar. No, I, I don't want it like super colorful. I think that's about right. So gold 200, it's kind of, it's, it's got a softness to it and a warmth to it with kind of greener kind of emerald shadows. If you warm this up a little bit, it looks really good on, on images like this one. So I applied gold 200, bring the exposure down just a little bit. Uh, what I'm looking at when I do that, I'm, I don't know if your eye goes here too, it goes right to here immediately. That's where I'm determining my exposure. And I go, you know what? His cheek is losing a little bit of detail, like his skin detail. And I want to just bring this exposure down to where I get a little bit of richness back in there. And that's like how I'm determining that there. Now, now it feels right. Uh, next I'm going to adjust temperature and tint. So that's part of the three step workflow. I'm going to just increase the temperature a little bit. And then I'm going to find a neutral somewhere in the image to establish my tint in a million of the other videos I've done. In fact, there's a video just on this. I, I always explain that if you want to nail tint, especially for skin tones, don't look at the skin and look anywhere, but the skin look for a neutral fabric or object or something in the image and use that to figure out your tint. So I've got a lot of choices here. I've got these white chairs. I've got his black jeans. I've got his hoodie. Um, maybe even some of the stuff in the background, there's a gray car back here. You know, a lot of people wouldn't even look back here, but you know, that's something I look at like this tire I know is supposed to be uh, black or somewhat black. So there, I have all these indicators that can help me figure out if it's too green or too magenta. And to me, it's obviously a little bit too green. So it's going to take my tint slider and go just, just ever so slightly towards magenta. I don't want to go so far that his hoodie turns magenta. That would be not good. So we're going from 11 to like, say plus 14, 14 or 15. And the very last thing I would do is maybe see if auto transform on can make this image. See, God, that's a good tool. I love that tool. I don't even know where the computer looked, but it like fixed all that. It's like straight and like corrected. It's so powerful. So auto transform plus gold 200. It's a nice moment. So you see how it has like a lot of richness after the edit and also the way that the edit really works with the highlights and shadows, but, but really emphasizes kind of the mid mid tone range. Um, it really draws your eye back into the middle of the photo. And I didn't do anything with like vignettes or any of that other stuff. Again, we're trying to preserve ice cream here. We don't want it to turn into milk and it turns into milk. If you like kind of mess with it too much, it looks and by milk, I mean, digital it looks really digital. So by using these tools very carefully and just very subtly, you can keep that film look. In fact, one of the only things I would do to kind of finish this off would be to add that grain. And unfortunately it's kind of hard to see, uh, to our viewers at home. Maybe I can show you better here. So this is before and that's after, but that is the thing that kind of just finishes it off. So I hope you enjoyed that. 
Um, we're going to be doing these every single week, or we have been doing them every single week. I think we're up to like episode, I don't know, 85 or 100 or something. Um, but we really enjoy doing these. Uh, we are community powered, and it's always a blast to see people I know. Well, may, maybe I've never met them in person, but I know them, and they're sending in images for us to edit, and I enjoy that. And I enjoy answering questions too. So please join us next time. Uh, I'm happy to edit your image, answer your questions. If you're just discovering us, be sure to hit the, the bell for getting all the notifications on YouTube and also to subscribe to our YouTube channel where you'll find so much valuable information on getting the edit that you've always wanted. If you want to reach us directly, if you have any questions, you can always go to m.me forward slash Masson Labs and we are happy to answer your questions. And if you're not already a member, please join our Facebook community on Facebook. So just go to the Mass Labs community on Facebook, join us. It's a party where everybody wins and learns. So be there. All right, until next time, have a great day and happy editing.